Okay, so market's gapping up. Um, at the end of the day, the spies came off, but really nothing compared to what we've been seeing in terms of the selling and the small caps. Um, this will probably be the fifth or sixth day in a row that will attempt to close above 292. So even with the day, with the big move here up to almost 293 on Tuesday, we still close below 292, approaching the high from this week. I would think we'll probably close above it today. At the handicap, it I would say 70 30. Um, so, with that in mind, we do have a little bit of selling pressure. Let's see what happens if we come into here. It's really strong on the spy. So, let's compare this to IWM, which I took out overnight just because it was so short term oversold. I'd come off in two days from 169 to 164. Made the big down move on Tuesday. The downside fall through yesterday. Um, quite often, after this hard of a down move, we'll see a bounce. So we'll get back inside of this range from the prior down day. Now we did that yesterday morning where we popped up and we failed at 166 and a half. And we just had another downtrend day. Um, but this is the area I'm targeting since I, what at the end of the day yesterday is right here. Yeah, it's possible that we can get up here and not pull back much and keep on going. But if we step back and we look at kind of what this does when it gets going in one direction, it does have a tendency to over, overshoot. So let's give you a couple of examples. Well, let's look at this one right here. So it got up to 170 this time. And then very quickly dropped to 164 from 170. Had a little bounce, kind of like we're having today, right? Um, bounced a couple of dollars and then made a new low at 62 and then retested it. I think we actually bought the first time here, 62. I didn't catch the retest. Um, and so, you know, we could bounce today at 166, maybe even get a little bit higher. Um, then flush down, either do a retest of 64 or take that out and go right back down to the, the July low. So that's that. Just looking for some spots in today. So I already, I already sold some um, right here when I got in this morning at this 165 and a quarter. I'd actually been targeting that since I was buying here. Um, my next sale was like up here around 165.70. Then kind of want to see if it can work its way to 166 and fails close to that 166, 165.80s. All right, GM. So most of you probably saw GM got this uh, investment in their autonomous spinoff unit. Uh, Honda's going to be putting in a couple billion over time into that. Um, I feel like usually when GM gaps up, I look for the short. But it's much lower than it was the last couple of times I think we looked for shorting it. It's already come off from 44 down to the low 30s. So it is in a strong downtrend. So is it likely for it to break through this on this story? Probably not. Um, right now it's actually failed at 35. But could it, could it hold above 35 and re, kind of test, retest the recent ice? Sure. Why not? Came off hard from 40 to 36. Not sure what this catalyst was. I think it was earnings pretty bad. Um, and failed a few times into 38. So it's coming down very methodically. Failed at 40, then fails at 38. Just failed at 36. It's $2 at a time. That ringer is annoying. Please shut off your ringer. Thank you. So 
Sellers in control now in the pre-market. After topping out here at 35.50, we're now selling it around 15 cents. So I guess the first thing to look at here is on the flush down, does it actually get it back above 35? And then what I'd want to see is it take this, this little thing out right here. So if it gets above 35 and comes into this area here, I'm not a believer in the long yet or holding along. Um, certainly if it starts to hold above 35 and you want to start nibbling, but you need to see it break through this pre-market resistance. If it looks something like this, then you get a retest. Yeah. Um, and then complete failure is just first move is down, comes back up. Can't get above 3505. From a big picture perspective, I don't really think this should move the stock. So, um, CNX. So this caught the downgrade. What caught my attention about the downgrade was the price target being lowered from 20 to 15. I like when someone lowers the target from to a price that's still a huge percent above where the stock is trading and it's trading down on the downgrade. So look for bottoming here. So we already have a lot of these commodities. Remember at first, they were, looked good. Trump was gonna build these tariffs, they were strong. You can see clearly we were looking at it because I had it marked up. Here it double topped. Um, then some news came out and it didn't get even get back up there. And then it started to hold below 20, and the rest is kind of history. Got cut in half. So the gap down below this prior low now, perhaps the same way it double topped up here, we'll, we'll flush through, put in a bottom, and maybe get back above this uh, prior low, move back inside of this consolidation range. If not, we go back to 2000. We got to go back to 2016. I guess the beginning of 2017 when it gapped up to nine and a half, and it ran from nine and a half to 16. So it's done about 15 percent of its daily volume. Tried to bounce a couple of times, failed here at a, right above 11. Uh, man, if they flush this anymore, I, I, I definitely would do bottom fishing in this one. Um, so flush it closer to $10, is great. Um, after that, what I'd want to see is a bounce to this area here and either just take this out cleanly like that, or if it fails there, then hold 1050 and then take out the intraday high. So something like this, comes in like this, and then does that. So that's that. Um, SFIX yesterday was sold all day. Did have a, I mean, you can see it I had a couple of tries, tried to bounce. This, I mean, really in my open. So it bottomed here at 30, 40-ish. It bounced back up to 31 and a half. And then when it came down, they started to buy it higher. So at this point, when they were buying it here, if it broke to the upside, obviously, um, got above 3160, you would have looked for the bounce. But it broke to the downside and it took out the morning low. Remember, when anything takes out the morning low, what we want to see is weakness below it, come back a retest of the morning low and a failure, which is what you got. But notice people were trying to get it to go above the morning, the morning lows. Notice it was spiking and closing down, spiking and closing down, and then finally started to trend cleanly at one o'clock. So this is pretty good. At this point here, if you were shorting this as it failed at 3050, you just have to be aware that 30, it could stop and potentially reverse. Probably why it, it wicked below and wicked back above. People are probably worried that it wasn't going to break down below 30. Um, but eventually got tight, tight, tight. When it took out the low, just kept on going. So it's extremely weak. 
Um, I had 28 as the next kind of support below 30. It almost got there yesterday, which is pretty damn extended for a one day move. But again, it's, it had gone up a ton. They lowered their growth projections. When you're a growth stock and you're doubling every six months and you lower your growth projections, people could take you to the woodshed for a few days. Um, so 28, this is the kind of the level here. Just from a bigger picture perspective, if it takes out this 28 and keeps on going, um, the next support is 26. And eventually it'll settle in somewhere in here, move sideways for two to four days, and then we'll see if it can, can kind of bounce back up into this area here. Just trying to go back to the beginning of the IPO. So when they first IPO to top that, at, that's kind of big, right? I topped out here at 30. So the key is going to be whether or not it can retake $30 today or in the next few days. And then it brings 32 and a half to 35 into play. Uh, IGC is just it's pretty wild yesterday. It's actually, well, it's getting hammered now. So let's see. We go to a two week. I want you to see this trend here. So it's now taken out kind of this, this uptrend from the last three or four days. So what we would look for before that, I was thinking a pop here and a failure, that would be your kind of move. And then you see what would happen here. Um, now remember, it's still above yesterday's pre-market, right? So it still actually can bounce from here for like a year. So this is how I'm looking at it right now, is this kind of this potential bounce area this potential support area. And then if it shows some weakness and they panic it all the way down, takes this out, I think people are gonna be looking at $8. And then, it'll, then you'll look for a bounce back up to 950, 960, and then see if it can take out that eight. And it's, then you just, in stocks like this where they're just not really trading on any real fundamentals, um, it's their pure momentum. People are just trading it on the, the, the on the prices. So fire resistance and support is where people are going to be looking to sell or buy. And so that's what we're looking at as well. Same way when it flushed down yesterday, right, right before the close into this 950 here from the pre-market and it caught a bid. And then once it started to hold above 10, it just, they ripped it back up to 12. And then they kind of played with people in the after hours and went to the intraday high or selling off pretty hard. So it's going to definitely be in play. I think it was about six and a half cents, so six, $65 per thousand to locate it from on our desk. So it's definitely worth it. It's moving dollars at a time. You want to be able to trade both sides on one of these. Um, AMD finally broke below 30. It got down to 2050. So just, I'm sure we've talked about this already, but I'll just refresh your memory. On the way up, after it had topped out the first time, almost at 30, it had pulled in to close to 27 and, and then broke out from here. So I thought if they were really gonna, after this kind of breakdown yesterday, if they weren't gonna have some follow through, this would be the spot right here. And to me, it would be a pretty good longer term swing by. And the Intel, Intel being able to ramp their production has been what's driving this kind of down move last few days. Remember them taking market share from Intel was a big reason, the big reason why it ran from the 20s to the 30s. Um, and then in terms of on the upside, obviously people are going to be looking at this 30 where it broke down from yesterday. In these situations quite often it'll overshoot. So it might come back up to 30, 70 to 31 and then fail there again. And then we kind of see if it came back down to 30 if it held at this time. Never broke through. Um, what's in it? Yeah, my thought was that it wasn't really a big deal, the, the investment in um, Billy, but the one thing that caught my attention was the percentage. Um, I don't know if the, what the rules are in China, but in the US, if you buy more than 10%, usually it's, you're looking at potentially acquiring the company in the future. And so that, that, that was kind of a, 
that's what Goldman did. I think they bought twelve and a half percent, but I have no idea if that's true in China as well. So. But what you, the way we'll know is if it is a big deal, this won't. Uh, it might sell off a little bit on the open, but it will never drop below fourteen dollars, or the, the highs from the last few days. And even if it's really a big news, it'll go up like this, and then make a higher low and do something like that. So I go by the price action. At first, when I saw it, I didn't think it was a big deal, but over 10% did catch my attention a little bit. Um, TTD, I think if I had alert stand at 132 and 130 yesterday, I definitely would have started to nibble. Um, this is one of the strongest stocks in the market. It's right up there with NVIDIA. So, you know, definitely wouldn't have been buying it here. But on a flush below that into this, um, what is that, 134? Yeah, anywhere from 134 down to 130, from a bigger picture perspective, is a good risk reward. Under the theory that it's going to work its way back up into the 140s. So we'll see this morning what happens at 140 if it. So I guess if they flushed it on the open again down to, so bottomed here, da, 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 da. I guess 133, 134, higher low, something like that right there. 36 is tough, not as good risk reward. So 36, I think you know, it's $4 of downside, $4 of upside. But worth keeping, worth keeping an eye on, especially if it spends some time consolidating in this area here for a few days. 